Hello guys, and welcome to Matt Speamer. This is my third Q&A on my channel, and I want to say a big thank you to those who have left me some questions on my um, social media outlets. Um, so thank you. The, fir the first one, not first, the first one belongs... What am I doing? The first question is from Joseph from the YouTube channel Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting. He's a guy who will find you any car you want, um, provide you in England, and um, yeah, he knows his stuff. He's he's very knowledgeable on um, cars and trims, and he's like an encyclopedia, basically. Anyway, he says, have I ever taken a BMW racing? And the answer is no. I would love to, but... Um, when I was in, when I was in England, I didn't live close enough to the racetrack, and it was quite expensive for me. Um, I can see why these people do illegal street racing, which is bad. I, I would never do that. Um, but no, I haven't basically been um, racing at all in my life. I've done go karting in Tenerife. That was good fun. I was on the quickest um, go karts. It was fun learning how to drift and all that kind of stuff. But I have been off-roading. I do enjoy off-roading. Um, years ago, when I was younger, before I, I could drive, my cousin um, had my cousin bought a classic Range Rover, so the one before the P thirty eight, and um, it was in the beautiful green. It looked okay on the outside, but the the um, the footwells were so corroded, you could um, see the road below your feet. Um, yeah, it was not good. So if you're driving in the rain, you got a wet, um, wet feet because the carpet had holes in it too. Um, I don't know how it was driving on the road, to be honest. I think that's why he bought it cheap. Yeah, it is obviously why he bought it cheap. Um, I think it was a, had some special plaque inside with Tickford or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was a special, um, a special one. So bear in mind, this was when, um, the Range Rover Classics were super cheap and the P38s were getting cheap, but they were still quite expensive. Um, I think he paid like £200 for this, three, I think it's a 3.9 V8 um, Range Rover. Anyway, what he did was, um, the first time he took it off-road in, it kept getting stuck because of the overhang and all that. So um, between him, my dad and myself, um, bear in mind I was little, um, we stripped down the um, the Range Rover, cut off the rear end, and cut off the roof and made it as light as we could. And we had a, a big rollover bar. Um, it sounded beautiful. Um, we took it off-road, obviously, and it performed a lot better. And it was the first time I ever drove a, um, a manual 4x4. Um, and my cousin said, oh, go up that ramp just up there. So I did. And um, not expecting, on the other side, there was a big, massive drop. And somehow I got to the bottom without rolling it. And it was ah, oh, it was such good fun. I would love to do it again. Um, obviously, um, it's best to do it in a controlled environment. Because um, where the safety crew are there. Because if you roll it over and um, someone hurts themselves, you get help quicker. So that's all I've done in the car. But I would love to take a BMW racing. That would be such good fun. I've had people um, who I know who, who are related to certain um, BMW race drivers. Um, but that's about it. And some of my family um, used to do um, racing too. But not me, unfortunately. I would love to. So Ben from Planet Auto has said, Why have BMW gone front wheel drive? And that's a good question. Um, first of all, um, they obviously want to keep the cost down making cars and um, rear wheel drive cars are more expensive to make um, for some reason. So um, what BMW did was they um, did a question air, for example this one series, they did a, a question air asking if they know which wheels are being driven in their car and unfortunately most one series owners um, don't really realize that their car is rear wheel drive and they said front wheel drive so, so BMW thought ah, most of the people who drive these one series don't care or don't even know what they're driving so let's turn it to front wheel drive but luckily they do have rear wheel drive um, which is a good thing um, but for me 
who's been a BMW fan since he was three or four, and being brought up with the BMW advert saying rear wheel drive is the best, it's quite hard to get my head round why BMW has gone to the front. But obviously, it's money. Um, they want to make more profit. It's also because the the F20 and the previous E generation one series um, have less um, luggage space and leg space in the rear as, for example, a Ford Focus or Mercedes A-Class. The best way they could actually um, make create more space in the um, cabin is to make it front-wheel drive, which gives you more space in the boot. And um, where the engine has been changed from this way to sidewards, it has a shorter bonnet, which makes the which allows you to have a bigger interior. So, yeah, all those little things add up and gives you more space. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's I don't know. Obviously, um, the minis are great fun to drive. Apparently, I never driven one. I would love to. If BMW can make great front-wheel drive cars like the Mini, I'm sure that the new 1 Series would be great. Anyway, real um, X-Drive is the way to go with the 1 Series, if you want one. But yes, people will say that with the smaller engine versions, you won't be able to tell if it's front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. And in some ways, they are correct. In normal day-to-day -day driving, on a normal sunny day, you, um, you wouldn't really know. Unless you're flying about doing stupid driving. But... Um, for me, living in Moscow, it snows. X-Drive will sell very well here. And, obviously, the front-wheel drive cars will do well too because people who want safety want to feel planted on the road and front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive are much better than rear-wheel drive. But I like having rear-wheel drive and having that um, different kind of control. Like when you go around the corner, a slight little blip and you can just slide a little bit. I mean, I will miss that if I ever bought a new one series. But anyway, I'm talking a load of whatever it's called now, and um, I've lost my train of thought. Next question is by Trips Bunch. He has said, he has asked, given your current living situation, if you had to get a new car, what would your ideal car be, realistically speaking? So, does the one series fit my lifestyle, um, having one baby? Yes, in summer it's very good. Um, I can fit enough shopping in the back, I can fit her baby bag in the back, I can fit the small buggy in the back. But when it comes to, um, oh, and you can fit, obviously have the ISO fix and that, so you can fit the baby in safely in the car seat. Currently I have a Maxi Cozy Pearl, but before that I had the Maxi Cozy... something. I forget what it's called. I'll show edit on the screen now. Um, yeah, it's all good until winter. In winter, in Russia, it's very, very cold. It can last. Last year, it sometimes went down to minus twenty-seven. And um, if I want to go out in this weather, away from my home, I need to take the car. And um, if I want to go outside, I need to take the big buggy which is massive. It's a stocky trails, trails, whatever you call it. Um, the reason that I need that pram is because it's so warm inside, because obviously you don't want a cold baby. That's bad news. Anyway, it's the big beefy one. And I haven't actually tested to see if it fits in my car yet, and I don't think it will. And if I do get it in the car, nothing else will fit. But luckily I don't go out much. Yeah. But anyway, what would I get? What would I want to get? Obviously, um, obviously, I am a BMW man, and I wouldn't want to go for anything else. Um, there's no point me getting the new one series because um, the space isn't much. It is a little bit bigger, but not much bigger. If it makes sense, I would need something like an X5, like an E70, um, like an E70 X5, basically. Um, living in Russia, it doesn't matter which engine I get, as long as it's reliable. Um, fuel costs are quite cheap here. As I said before, this car costs about twenty-two to twenty-five pound to fill up. So an X5 would be a bit more, but it's um, not like it is in England. So if I lived in England, I would get a X70 X5 diesel, probably a forty D like my dad's X6. Uh, I would love an X6, but um, 
Obviously the um, boot is a bit smaller than the X5. That would be my ideal car at the moment. Or actually, another one. Um, I wouldn't mind buying that older E39 5 Series Touring. They're very good, reliable, um, easy to fix, um, not too many, um, not too much stuff to go wrong on it. And they look nice still. They're fun to drive. I used to have my dad used to have the E39 M5 AC Snitzer version. And um, he loved it. And he regretted selling that for his E65 730D Sport. Um, so that's why he went over to Mercedes and bought the SL. This was years ago, back in 2002, 2003. But, yeah. Yeah, so either a Touring 5 Series or an X5. Um, the E60s are nice, but I'm not sure how reliable they are. Actually... I will have to speak to my friend Martin from um, the Car Mechanics magazine because I know that he has a 530D, I think it is, in his magazine. Um, maybe I can borrow his when I'm in England next and do a video on that. Who knows? But yeah, I do love all BMWs, but the newer ones do scare me a bit with all these um, tools and computers you need. Luckily, this car, my, e my F20, is very basic and um, it's easy to fix. And in Russia, it's quite strange. They don't seem to like um, the upper market estate cars. They see the um, estate cars as a tool. So they buy things like the Skodas and the Seats and all the um, like Volkswagen Passat estates. Um, it's very strange when I don't like the estate, to be honest. Um, I love the estates, as I just said. And my dad used to have a E34 540i back in 1996. It was a 1994 model with a 4-litre V8. And that, well, that was great. I would love one of those, actually. That'd be quite fun. Anyway, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Next question. Um, oh, I thought to say, another question from Ben. Ben from Planet Auto has also said... I've forgotten to answer this one. <laughs> He says, will I buy him a BMW i8? Hmm. Yes, but only if you buy me a Mint E31 Alpina B12 8 Series. That would cost about three times the amount of the um, i8. Cheers, Ben. <laughs> Next person is from Red Adair. Red Adair? Red Adair? I don't know. How do you say your name, buddy? He says, Nissan Duke, why? And good question. I think it should be called Nissan Puke. Um, obviously, there's a market for these cars, and um, I'm not one of the people who would ever buy one. I would love to review one. If someone has one to review or film, that'd be great. But for me, um, they are not beautiful. They're not even good looking. They're not even average. They're, for me, they're ugly. Um, I've been in one actually, it was a taxi um, a while back and I couldn't even fit in the back properly. My uh, my knees were up by my ears, yeah. And um, actually there is one that I like. Uh, it was a sporty one, I think it's a Nismo. It was white with um, red details over it. It was, um, oh, message on my watch, no. No one important, just another... Um, Announcement of another video going live by Seen Through Glass. If I ever did have to buy a Duke, which I hopefully never will have to, because it's not even practical for me, um, I would go for the Nismo version. Um, they look okay. They look um, much better as a Nismo version than the standard one. In f fact, uh, my friend Joseph from Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting has just done a video on the um, Nissan Duke in a yellow and um, it's quite funny and it was a diesel one and obviously he he didn't hide his fact that he um, hated this car or disliked this car shall I say. So Nissan Duke, the only reason they make him really is because some people like him. Before the last question, I want to say a big thank you to those who have asked me questions for this video. And if any of you have questions about cars or this YouTube channel, um, 
just ask away. I enjoy it. And the sooner I have lots of questions, the sooner I can make a Q&A, as they're easier for me to film at the moment. The last question is by a lady I actually know, and um, I should call her Nanny. I should call her Nanny Plum. She asks, "How will I ever afford a DB9?" And to those of you who don't know what a DB9 is, it's an Aston Martin. It's replaced the DB7. Um, good question. <laughs> um, buying it is actually the easiest part. Um, I think the cheapest one you can buy is about £23,000 in England. I should just quickly check on the Auto Trader. You may be able to get them cheaper elsewhere. Um, obviously, um, one second, I'll get back to you. DB9, DB9, where are you? Postcode, um, distance national, make Aston, Aston, where are you? Aston, 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 not Aston Villa, Aston Martin, there you go. Model DB9. Um, any model, doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, Aston Martin DB9 is a DB9. Um, search. Okay, the cheapest Aston Martin on the market today is a... Aston Martin DB9 5.9 with a se sequential gearbox. Uh, it's a coupe. It's got full service history. Oh, wow. And it's actually... 15 miles away from where I actually lived in England, which is in Lewis, basically. Wow. So if you live in Lewis and you want, Aston, you want an Aston Martin, there's one there. And actually, Nanny Plum, it's just near your house. Excellent. <laughs> Apparently, this car has full service history. Mostly Aston Martin dealers. That's, that's good. Um, it was only used now and again for the last few years due to them having a third child. Ah, it has two small seats in the back, so I'm guessing their previous two kids were squished. So I wonder what they're going to get next. Um, ah, it's had five owners. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's 2006. There she is. Just a, there you go. There she is. What a beautiful car. Kind of like James Bond's, maybe a slightly different shade of silver. The person who would know once more again, the, the person who would know is once again my friend Lloyd, f not my friend Lloyd, my friend Joseph from Lloyd's Vehicle Consulting. He loves James Bond and all that kind of thing. So for me, the best way is to start saving. Any spare money that you want to save up for a rainy day, you just stick it in the Esther Martin Fund. Um, so let's say um, you wanted to have the Aston Martin in four years. Just put £500 a month away for fun. And then eventually you will have the cash to um, buy the Aston Martin. But that's where it ends. The fun, the easy part. Obviously you have to um, save up the insurance, which is more money. Um, the costs of actually running the Aston Martin, other than the insurance and petrol, are quite high. Um, some people spend thousands and thousands on these cars every year to keep them going. One person who's a famous YouTuber is called Doug DeMuro. Luckily he had his bumper to bumper um, warranty on it which saved him thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, and to be honest the Aston Martins aren't that reliable my dad, actually, my dad years and years ago, back in 2008, I think it was, he looked at buying a um, Aston Martin DB9 in silver. Um, it could be the one that's in this advert, actually, if it, when it was much newer. It was 2005, 2006, silver. It looked absolutely beautiful. But whenever he opened the door, the, the glass went down a little bit. When he closed the door it did not go back up. So every time he opened the door, the glass kept going down and eventually it fell out. <laughs> so he didn't actually end up buying that Aston Martin. So I wouldn't recommend um, buying an Aston Martin if you just want to drive it to work 
and um, want to skimp on skimp, skimpy, skimp on maintenance. It's a car that you would keep in the garage and drive on special occasions, and you would obviously need thousands and thousands of pounds in the bank for backup. It's the same situation with cars like Range Rovers. They're very cheap to buy now, but they're very unreliable, and the costs to fix them are very high. Actually, Nanny Plum, what car are you driving now? I forgot that you drove. <laughs> um... But if you do start saving for four years, let's just hope that the prices don't suddenly shoot up. But I'm not sure they will. In fact, they may even drop soon um, due to the Brexit. Who knows? People might get scared, sell their beautiful cars and buy um, little hatchbacks or little saloon cars. We never know what's going to happen next. Anyway, thank you for your question, Nanny Plum. I'm sorry I didn't answer the question um, accurately. It's quite... Um, quite a difficult topic to answer without knowing all the facts and figures behind the scene um, there's people watching me again uh, it's quite strange when people watch you sitting in your car talking to a camera it's not even a telephone it's a camera and they're saying who's that weirdo looking at it who's that weirdo filming himself hey look at him hey. <laughs> anyway any questions just write down below the more questions I have the quicker I can do Q&A's basically if you want to see my previous Q&As, I'll leave the link down below if I remember. My memory is not the best. Thank you so much and take care. Goodbye.